When I started researching the Hyatt family, I was just a kid. And I had lots of questions about who are the Hyatts? Where do we come from? Um, and actually there's quite a lot of differing stories about that. Um, I, I wanted to know, were there knights, castles, and you know, noble people? Or do we come from kings? Or because you'll find people that will trace their family back to Charlemagne or uh, William the Conqueror. We come from some interesting people, but we're not going to mess with any kings. <laughs> as far as I know, I haven't found any connection to that kind of nobility. And frankly, I'm happy with that. <laughs> not really into kings. Um, but we do come from a, what you might call noble family. That is, we were people who were free, uh, in, in a sense, and that uh, we were not, you know, enslaved to people. And by the way, almost everybody in Europe was sort of a, enslaved at some point. Uh, that was the norm. The, the normal peasant did not own his own land and worked for his lord and basically had to take what was given him. Um, but we don't come from that level of people. We come from, I guess, what you might call minor nobility. We do have a coat of arms. Um, so here it is. This is the Hyatt coat of arms. You probably can't see it too good. Lots of reflections. But basically it's a black lion on a silver shield. And the top of the shield has a black stripe with a crooked line, kind of like Charlie Brown's shirt. All that stuff had meaning. Now, to get to the level of the family to which this coat of arms belonged, we have to go back to about 1470. There was a guy whose name was James Hyatt. Uh, this is the first person that I can find that has our name that I think there's a reasonable chance that we are descended from him or members of his family. Probably not direct descendants. Probably descended from members of his extended family. Uh, he lived in the western part of England, and this is where the Hyatts are found, is in the western part of England near the border with the country of Wales. Um, the, the town there that we were involved with is the town of Gloucester. The Hyatts had a uh, title that was given to them where they are known as Freemen of Gloucester. Um, that title still exists in Gloucester. And people today who hold that title, they have various types of clothing that they wear, ribbons and so forth. And they meet, I think, once a year, once a year with the mayor. And they have some sort of ceremony that recognizes them as free men of Gloucester. Now, what that meant was that you were not a slave or a serf that was owned by a lord, that you were an independent free person. If 
if you were a freeman of Gloucester, you had the right to drive your cattle through town. I guess that's good if you raise cows. Uh, it's a very old title. We had that title. Just up from Gloucester, there's a place called the Forest of Dean. It's a royal forest, which means the king owns it. Uh, there's all kinds of rules about what you can and can't do in a royal forest. It's a whole separate part of English law. And if you've seen anything about Robin Hood, that involves royal forests. The main thing was that the trees and the deer and so forth were there for the use of the king. And that is not you. So if you take the king's deer without permission, or you cut the king's trees without permission, there will be trouble for you. <laughs> So there's a reason for this, of course, and that is kings got to eat like everybody else. And they expected the people who were in charge of these royal forests to send a certain amount of meat to the palace or wherever the king was on a regular basis so that the king had meat in the freezer, if he had a freezer, which he did not. But he would have meat to eat. There's another thing in the Forest of Dean. They had mines. The Forest of Dean had mines that extracted iron and coal out of the ground. Both of those were very important. Uh, they were needed for industry. And so the Forest of Dean was also a place where mining and uh, you might call light industrial activity, blacksmithing, and that sort of thing was going on. We're involved, our family was involved with all that stuff. Somebody had to do these things for the king and send on the things that were, that came out of that. And um, our family was part of that. Um, the other thing is there's a military aspect to it. The people in the forest were hunters, uh, usually, because when the king came, he wasn't going to do all the hunting himself. He had foresters and people to come and help him. And if you were going to send meat to the king, somebody had to go out and shoot it. All right. So the people in the royal forests, including the Forest of Dean, were generally proficient as hunters with the bow. And so there was a military aspect to it. There's also a military aspect to it because it's right on the border with Wales. The Forest of Dean is separated from Wales by a river. On the near side of the river, the east side, it's England. You go across the other side of the river, it's Wales. And from the place where we lived, we could look across that river and see Wales. And the Welsh were, for a good part of English history, an enemy of England. So part of our job was to make sure that the Welsh stayed in Wales. However, the people of the Forest of Dean tended to have connections on both sides of the river. There tended to be marriages across the boundary. And you probably don't find too many people from the Forest of Dean that don't have a little bit of Welsh in them because they were so close. So it was sort of natural. So all that is part of our family history. Now, here's the tricky part. Can I prove a direct line of descent 
from me to those Hyatts in the Forest of Dean? No, I can't. Our family history has so far stopped at the waterline in Maryland. Long ago in the 1600s, our family was living in Maryland. We know that they were in Maryland around 1660. But we don't know how they got to Maryland. So if you're lucky, there's a passenger list from some boat that says this guy went from here to here. We don't have a 100% proof of how we crossed the water. We know we did, because here we are. There is a guy named Thomas Hyatt who shows up in passenger records on a ship called the Bonaventure about 1635. Could he have been the father of our first ancestor that we can trace directly to, which is Charles Hyatt? Maybe. For a long time, I thought yes. Now, I'm not sure. So, some people claim to have records of Thomas Hyatt's children. And the Charles Hyatt of Maryland isn't one of them. There's another Charles, no, excuse me, there's another Thomas Hyatt that shows up in Maryland around 1650 something, 1653. We have a record that he, his voyage was sponsored by a guy in a suburb of London called St. Dunstan's. Um, but do we know for sure that he was the father of the Charles Hyatt that we know we're descended from. We don't know. It's probably a good guess. So when we talk about these Hyatts in England, we're referring to what we might call the time of legends. I don't care. I claim them. I know that there are Hyatts over there I know where they live, and I believe that we're descended from them. I just can't prove it father to son. So if you think you're going to claim some kind of title or something, forget about it. I'm not interested in doing that, and it's not going to work, okay? But I do believe we have a family connection to the Hyatts of the Forest of Dean and the Hyatts of Gloucester. And there's also some Hyatts in the area around London and some Hyatts in uh, the area around a little town called Chipping Norton. There might be some connections there. Can I prove it on paper? Can't do it. So anyway, that's a little bit about who the Hyatts are. I'll do another episode and I'll give you some more information. But that's all we're doing for right now. See you again.